So today's video is sponsored by LifeAid. You probably remember them from the Track Skull and Helmsman software that I use, and I've done video tutorials on both of those software as well as some other LifeAid products. And actually, if you haven't seen that video that I did on Helmsman, uh, I recommend that you go watch that before watching this video, because today we'll be using Helmsman along with the Gatekeeper board to show how you can incorporate digital sensors into your animatronic shows to make it more interactive for your audience. So this is the Gatekeeper board. Of course, I'll include a link in the description if you would like to go check out this board for yourself. And what it does is it connects to your computer through a USB and allows you to trigger different playlist events in your Helmsman playlist uh, using things like motion sensors, step pads, brake beam sensors, even buttons if you want. And of course, the kind of playlist events that you can trigger could be things like playing a specific VSA routine or starting the playlist. And I think there's a lot of really interesting things that you can do with this board. And I actually came up with a lot of ideas on how you could use it when I was writing this video. But to keep things simple just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to continue to use that sleeping skeleton project that I made for the Helmsman video. But if you're interested in seeing the ideas that I did have, uh, I'll be talking about those at the end of this video, so stick around for that if you're interested. So first things first, let's take a look at the Helmsman project that we will be using for this. So here is our Helmsman playlist. You'll see that it has two VSA routines, Snore Skelly, uh, which is where the skeleton is just snoring and he's just asleep. And then we also have Wake and Beware. And Wake and Beware is where he is like startled awake, like he's been caught sleeping on the job. Uh, and he gives us like a little spooky warning and then falls back asleep. And actually the first thing I'm going to do is disable that wake up routine uh, because we want the skeleton to only wake up if somebody approaches him, otherwise just have him constantly be snoring and asleep. And in order to detect when someone has walked up to him, I'm going to be using a motion sensor. I'll include a link in the description to the motion sensor that I'll be using. They're pretty cheap and also kind of fun to play with. I'm going to go ahead and wire it up to pin 1, uh, and for this project I will only be using one sensor, but on this board you can actually use up to 8, which means you can have 8 different sensors doing 8 different things, uh, which is cool. And now that we have our sensor wired up to the board, uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect the board to the computer. Plug it in using the USB cable, and make note of what port that it uses. Don't worry too much if you don't know what that means, just go into Device Manager, and then scroll down to where it says ports, common LPT, uh, and you'll see that it's labeled gatekeeper. Make note of what port that it's on because we will be using that later. And now we'll go back to Helmsman, uh, go into options, and we will be using, of course, gatekeeper instead of the keyboard, uh, so make sure that you select that. And then under COM port, uh, that is where you will be doing that. It was on COM 13 on my computer. And you may have noticed that when you first plugged it in, uh, there's a light that comes on that's flashing green and red really quickly, and that's telling you that the board has power, but it just hasn't connected to the software yet. And once it does connect to the software, you'll see that the light is now flashing slowly. So now that that's all set up, I'm going to go ahead and tell Helmsman uh, what I want it to do when that motion sensor detects motion. So in this case, we want the skeleton to wake up. So I'm going to go to the first input, I'm actually going to rename it. Uh, because that's the input that we connected the motion sensor to. Let's call it motion sensor. And we want it to play a specific routine, which is that wake and beware. Uh, and we want it to play always, which means regardless of whether or not that snore routine is currently playing, uh, play this wake up routine. And then afterwards, we want it to continue the playlist so it'll just keep looping through that snore routine. Uh, so we should choose play always then continue. And of course we want to make sure we have the right routine selected. And then hit OK. So I've gone ahead and started that snore routine. Of course it should just keep looping through that over and over until we set off the motion sensor. Uh, and I have the motion sensor on his left collarbone right now. Uh, and if we do want to wake him up, we just set off the sensor. I also wanted to mention that LifeApe makes these cool little remotes uh, that work with Gatekeeper to allow you to wirelessly trigger up to four different inputs. And it works kind of like the same way as a sensor. So right now I have it connected to the board. Uh, and if I press the number one button, which is for the first input, you'll see that our skeleton wakes up.
And all you need to do to connect that up is, of course, just plug the module into the top of the board like that. Of course, the buttons act like four different sensors, uh, so we could go in and edit and have them do whatever we want. Now, I think that the Sleeping Skeleton project is a really cool and pretty easy project that you can make with this board, but you can get a little more creative and use it in a lot of other really interesting projects. I came up with a few ideas when I was first writing this video, and of course, I just went with the Sleeping Skeleton for simplicity. But here are some of those other ideas that I had. So the first idea that I had was that if you have a walkthrough where the entrance and the exit are side by side like this, you could place an animatronic in between the two. And then you can place a sensor here at the exit and then here at the entrance and then use those two sensors to trigger the animatronic to greet people when they're walking into the attraction and then say goodbye to them as they're leaving. And another idea I had for using this board could be a way to give your animatronic band the ability to take song requests. And an implementation of this could be in the form of a jukebox, where you could have like a little animatronic figure inside that sings the songs. And of course, each button lines up with an input on Gatekeeper, uh, and each of those buttons, of course, trigger a different song routine to play. So yeah, those are some ideas I had on some cool things that you can do with the Gatekeeper board. Of course, I think there are a lot of creative ways that you can use this board, and if you guys have any ideas that you'd like to share, uh, you're always welcome to leave those in the comments. And as always, if you are interested in learning more about this board, or if you'd like to purchase one for yourself, I'll include a link in the description for that. And also, I wanted to thank you guys for your patience with me while I made this video. Uh, I wanted to focus more on my schoolwork last semester, which is why you didn't really hear much from me. Um, but I'm back now and I've got some pretty cool stuff planned for the summer. First of that being that I have put up more stuff on the Patreon. Uh, so if you'd like to see more exclusive content or any like behind the scenes thing, uh, or if you just want to help me out and help out the channel, uh, consider checking that out. You can find it at patreon.com slash castmenagerie. And thank you to the people who are my patrons. Uh, you guys are the ones that make this all possible. And second of all, Speaking of things I've been up to, uh, I've been hard at work at getting those skeleton live streams to happen. And of course, that's where I go over the full process of how to make one of these skeletons as well as program it. Those will be a tremendous amount of work, and I am doing my best to make those happen along with all of my other commitments this summer. Uh, so subscribe and turn on notifications if you would like to stay updated on that. I just finished making a full parts list for that. I will include that probably in the description of this video along with various other places on the channel. Uh, I just wanted to go ahead and get that out to you guys. Uh, and the first live stream will happen on Saturday, June 26th at 3 p.m. Eastern. And that is where I will be going over that parts list, uh, talking about the different things that you'll need, anything to keep in mind. Uh, and I'll also be taking any questions that you guys have before we get started. So as always, keep up the awesome work, guys, and I will see you all then.